Welcome back, troglodytes, to your daily dose of guitar information, the Trogly's Guitar Show. You know, typically when you go guitar hunting online, you go to your usual places. You've got Reverb, you've got old school eBay. You can also do Craigslist, but personally, Craigslist kind of scares me, so I don't even check that too often. But recently, I've been getting a lot of people who want me to check out Goodwill. So Goodwill, if you're not familiar, I'm not sure if this is a worldwide company or whatnot, people take things to Goodwill, and then Goodwill provides jobs to teenagers and people who might not always be able to get a job. I've never really paid attention to this because they're mainly, you know, lower end guitars. They're not worth a ton of stuff. But, you know, if you have a niche and you can circulate all these listings that they do, like who knows, maybe this thing's worth a lot more than it's selling for. So let's go ahead and see what we can find guitar related on Goodwill auctions today. Today. So keep in mind, I've never actually done this before, so let's see what our categories are. Antiques, art, bath and body. Really? People do bath and body on this? Who wants to buy old soap? I guess towels might be okay. But where's our guitars? Musical instruments, here we go. First thing I see here, vintage Framus four string tenor banjo. This doesn't look like anything too incredibly fancy to me. That almost kind of looks Japanese made, like maybe 70s, if I were just to guess based off of not having any knowledge on stuff. I really like the wood grain on the back of that thing. Oh, nice. They even give you the action gauge. Let's see, how much is this actually worth? Okay, it looks like I was about right, maybe late 60s, 70s. The logos are looking a little bit different here. Yeah, that's not the same. What about this one? Are we going to get lucky here? Headstock style is similar. And not the same logo either. So I couldn't find exactly what this is, and it might have had some repairs and whatnot, but it appears to be at least worth a little bit more than it's currently going for. Let's see, can we filter this just down to guitars? Nice, you can. Guitars and basses. It looks like you can also do like amps. Wow, they even go as far as categorizing it as electric and acoustic. Okay, maybe I have been missing out on something here. It just surprises me that so many people would donate these guitars. I mean, they clearly have at least a little bit of value. S101, that's kind of a, a beginner brand. I've seen them before. It kind of reminds me of like a Dean or an Epiphone Special 2. I mean, I'm sure it's an okay guitar. You can tell by those tuners it was likely uh, made overseas somewhere. I think these are actually fairly recent guitars despite looking rather vintage. So something like this, I think it's already exceeded its value. And to tell you the truth, that's why I don't really pay attention to these auctions as much because everything that I do see that is interested, they always sell for way more than they're actually worth. Now this, that reminds me, what is it? The Starcaster or something has a headstock similar to that. So put that on a Stratocaster. I really like that blue color, the way that the plastics have aged on that thing too. I could see somebody liking that for like 150, 200 bucks. Well, maybe it's actually worth even more. Custom handmade turbo. Certainly looks like the action's okay. Cool. Looks like maybe around 300 bucks used. The other thing you have to remember is all these prices we're seeing, that's not the final sales price. So it might actually be a lot lower. So I think this is great for somebody who's like just starting out with guitars. You don't have a lot of money to invest because something quirky like this, I mean, this one has the vibe. It's got that aged look to it and the finish looks much better than the one we're looking at here. But you never know how good or bad these things are until you start playing them. But I really like the figuring on that neck. I couldn't see it selling for more than 250 bucks though. So pretty much already where it should be. Here's one of those dinky ones. I know we reviewed a glary version of this guitar. Apparently there's just a Chinese manufacturer that makes these things and then brands them whatever they want to be. Brand new, these things are like 60 bucks. Oh, nice. I would love to get one of these things. The Epiphone by Gibson. Stratocaster. I know there's higher end versions and I think the higher end ones have the painted headstock caps. But you can find these guys in a bunch of different colors. They normally sell anywhere between like a hundred bucks to about 250. Oh, there we go. Epiphone Les Paul Special 2. That's kind of what we were talking about not too long ago. I had one of these. This was my very first Les Paul guitar. It was black, but it was not one of these. And instead of saying special model, it said special 2 in the script logo right here instead of that. That was a great guitar. The intonation was terrible on it, but as far as the first Les Paul goes on a budget, I thought it was pretty nice. I do regret selling that guitar. So if anybody finds an Epiphone Special 2 that has a kill switch installed on it, let me know. I'd be interested in getting that guitar back. I sold it on Craigslist back when I was starting to collect high-end guitars. What have we got going on? Oh, 
Daisy Heartbreaker. You know, those original Heartbreakers, they can actually sell for some good money too. This looks like one of those full-sized ones. I think you can get upwards of like 250, 300 bucks for a full-sized one. I don't think I would do another review and demo. I had my Powerpuff Girls episode. That was good enough for me. But Sweet has got the original gig bag too. It's always strange how the Daisy Rock guitars always show up on Goodwill. What kind of freaky pink guitar do we got going on here? That's just so misshapen, missing a string. I can tell why somebody donated this thing. Just blows my mind how many Stratocaster copies and knockoffs there are in the world. Oh man, that action's terrible. Ah, uh, who's bidding on this? Okay, I don't feel bad paying 25 bucks for that. I hope it doesn't go for too much more. So I think you still have to pay for shipping on top of all of this and a handling price. I feel like Goodwill could make this site better. Like it's so hard to actually see what this other stuff is. Like give us some larger pictures. There's definitely enough room on this page to do so. As far as getting a deal on like a Gibson or a Fender that rarely shows up on here, I don't think so. But, but on these niche market 70s, 80s guitars, I mean, there are a lot of people that like these things. They collect them. I'd never heard of Eagle before. But, you know, it kind of looks like a 74 Les Paul Custom, but a bolt-on neck. The volute looks pretty nice. I mean, nor normally these made in Japan guitars are pretty good. But these set neck ones usually have a higher quality to them. But e even this one, people are on top of that. 280 and the auction's not even over. It's got a whole day left. I can't even uh, seem to find a matching brand for that. It pulls up a bunch of other stuff. Once again, another reason why... I don't think it's even worth looking at these auctions. <laughs> you can almost buy a brand new case for not that much more, especially once they add on their handling price and shipping. I mean, that's already been bid to the moon. I guess unless somebody has a particularly old Les Paul from Epiphone that they want the exact original case for, but you might as well just buy a newer one. Vintage lap steel. Now that... That's the like that mother of toilet seat stuff, I think they call it. This thing's pretty cool. I think if I was shopping locally at a Goodwill and I saw this thing, I'd get pretty pumped for it. I'm curious what those tuners are. They look like they're replacements, but sometimes you can find like parts that would go on a Gibson or a Fender guitar on a different brand. And sometimes those parts have quite significant value to it. So it might be worth parting them out. Oh, wow. We finally found a Gibson. Who? donates a gibson i don't i don't understand the mentality <laughs> surely well maybe in this case i can understand it didn't have any parts so whoever was going through it the guy probably died and they're like well clearly this isn't worth any money no nah, it's still worth money i don't what, did, what happened to those tutors somebody just ripped them off okay SG Faded Special. It appears to be one of the nice ones with the ebony fretboard, though. I mean, even those pickups right there, they're at least worth a hundred bucks. The husk. I guess it depends if it's had a headstock repair or not. Okay. All right. I see what happened to those tuners. The backs popped off of them. That is why I've come to hate Cluson tuners. I love the way they look, but I've come to prefer Grovers because this garbage doesn't happen. So yeah, it's pretty beat up and it is a 2004, but even in this condition, I think you could pretty solidly get, oh boy. Well, maybe 350. I think you could get 350 on this. And that's exactly where it is. So as far as somebody buying that to resell and make money, I think that'd be pretty tough with a giant gouge out of the back like that. I mean, at least it's not the top, but you're at least going to have to invest 50 bucks in installing new tuners and the bridge and tailpiece. Yeah, I think that's pretty much, you know, at the top of what it is. And a lot of times people will find these thinking, oh man, Gibson, Gibson, bid up, bid up, keep bidding it up. And they sell for way more than it should. It would not surprise me if this sells for 800 bucks. Because the reason why I decided to do this episode today is because some people were sending me a link to an L6S that had been highly modified. And it ended up selling for way more than it should have. So I was curious what we might be able to find on here. Ooh, a Disney. Oh. Yes. <laughs> Hannah Montana Disney by Washburn. The secret star model. Yeah, I don't think I want it that badly. It's kind of like a, a bad Telecaster ripoff. I mean, at least they got the pickups right, but the whole body's squished down. I hate reduced scale length guitars. They just, they're not as good as they should be. Unless you're buying like one of those Lotus Les Pauls, it's probably not worth it. 
Now this has a nice color. Sometimes you can just find a weird off-brand guitar that, you know, kind of speaks to you in a way. Or at least gives you ideas of what you'd like to do on your next project guitar. Ooh. That is very clearly the Fender headstock right there. It's kind of impressive though, it has the uh, Fender Ultra swoop way before the Fender Ultra, or even the original Ultra was likely a thing. What's this? PV Custom Shop Jack Daniels. Who donates this? That looks pretty nice. I mean, it's probably a veneer. I'll have to do some research into that. It's got that multiply binding, kind of a root beer-esque finish. Kind of reminds me of one of those uh, Wolfgang guitars. Okay, made in Korea by PV. An actual Jack Daniels brand. I thought it was like a, a sponsored thing. Ooh, certified by Goodwill Tech. It looks like all the good stuff gets guaranteed. All right, I'll bite. How much is that thing worth? Seriously? That's gotta be a higher end version. It's gotta be. There's no way it's worth that much. I mean, that's already looking fancier than our last one. This one doesn't appear to have that tummy cut. All right, so maybe this one's an actual custom shop thing, whereas the other one was like a cheaper version. Because notice the one we were just looking at doesn't have any of this other stuff on it. Man, this one looks pretty good too. I find it strange that PV makes Jack Daniels brand guitars, but I think isn't it Gibson's rejects actually go to be burnt at Jack Daniels or something like that? It's at some brewery. Well, that was interesting. What's this Dean doing here? That looks like one of those tiny ones, not the full size. <laughs> that looks so ridiculous. Ooh, neck pocket crack. Made in China. Oh, nice, Corvus. So I've been getting a massive influx of Gibson Corvus guitars. Like every single day I have two or three people sending me either this listing or a different Corvus that they've seen. I've actually reviewed the highest end Corvus called the Futura. It was a all one piece guitar, not just a set neck or a neck through a one piece guitar. And I do have a Corvus one right now. It just has a single bridge pickup. We'll eventually review that one. But here's another case of where a Gibson shows up on Goodwill auctions and people freak out. It's a legitimate Gibson on this site. It even has the original case. It's already been bid up to $800. And one of the tuners is broken. I guarantee you, I will have a hard time selling my Corvus one at 900 bucks and it's in better condition than this one. So the fact that we still have three days left on this thing, I really do not see why it won't sell for 1200 bucks. And that's about the same price that I ended up taking for my Futura. They're rare, but nobody really wants these things. I think they're kind of cool in an ironic 80s way though. Let's see, can we actually just search for uh, like Gibson? Yeah, see, last time we did that. So can we filter these? There we go. Maybe that's what I was doing wrong before. Ah, dang. There's just no way to check if there's good Gibsons because whenever there's a maestro on here, buy Gibson. I hate it when they do that. So it looks like the SG faded, the Corvus. What happened to that? Okay, all those reflections made it look like it was completely beat up, but apparently it's okay. This is a spirit which is kind of a, another offshoot, very cheap brand, unplayable action type thing going on here. Wow. Like what is this, a uh, studio tribute? Something like that. That fretboard is really light colored. I wonder if that's like a, from the baked maple era. That's what it looks like to me. Baked maple usually has that really cool looking wood grain. That's why I really, really like the Buckethead Studios that have like a lot of wood grain because their fretboards can look even cooler than the signatures with the ebony ones, you know, in a different way. And it usually has a very velvety feel. So made in 2011, <sighs> that's why it was donated. That's a crack and it's likely not been repaired at all. Holy cow. What do people do to do that? I mean, not only did it get punched in, but it looks like it got melted in. They've actually got natural greening going on on the side. Finish checking on a satin finish, impressive. And interestingly enough, a soldered on ground wire. Okay, so how much is this guitar worth in that condition? Probably about 450 bucks. What is it selling? <sighs> you would never be able to get that price on Reverb, never. I mean, you could get a brand new mint condition one of these. 
All right, so this is not the exact model, but you know, very good condition, $1199.99. I wouldn't even call that very good. It looks like it's pretty used to me. But this thing is going to need substantial repair work. <sighs> good job, Goodwill. That's all I've got to say. They can get crazy money out of donated guitars. I mean, it's just a super win for that company. But that looks like that is all the Gibsons here. But let's see, what kind of Fenders do we got? Now Fender has, you know, many different levels within their offerings, so it can kind of be hard just, you know, search one thing and then actually pull up something really good. But that looks like a nice find, Fender Mustang Bass. That looks pretty aged. It's got a cool sticker on it, Fight Extinction, okay. I like the wood grain on that one. Oh, it looks like it says crafted in Japan, so made in Japan. I guess it's not quite as old as I thought it would be. But cool, I think that about does it for me today. We found some interesting guitars on shopgoodwill.com. Will I waste my time looking through this every day? I don't think so, because I bet in its heyday, before people figured out about all this stuff, you could get fantastic deals, but anymore it just seems like uh, it's pretty well picked over and people aren't fully educated on what they're buying, so many times they'll end up overpaying for what it is. But it is a legitimate service, so if you just happen to be looking for this particular rare guitar, and it does show up in a Goodwill auction, Go for it. I mean, this one's actually quite interesting. Reminds me of the uh, the JA, Jim Atkins. I think it's what, called the TC90 I did a review on. Those are pretty cool guitars. All right, thank you Troglodytes for tuning in today. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and we will see you tomorrow on the next episode. Take care.